Let's see if we can come up with a mechanism here. Any ideas what would happen first here? Mm, not really. Okay, we'll go through that. This is another important reaction. All right, now actually we, we should get to the point where it's very clear what's going to happen first here. I don't know if we had a chance to talk about this for the last exam, but anytime you have a strong acid, you must start by protonating somebody. Anytime there's a strong acid in the reagents, no so question. Is the water protonated? That's certainly one thing that could happen, but that's not going to give us the interesting products here, so we're not going to bother drawing that. So the acid protonated? Well, the acid is the thing that protonates somebody else, right? Remember, what does an acid do? The Bronsted lowry definition of an acid is that an acid is somebody who likes to protonate somebody else. Uh, an acid is somebody who likes to lose their proton and give okay, the proton. So, pro so protonating means that they want to get rid of a proton? Yeah, by giving the proton to somebody okay, else. Well, I was thinking the opposite. So. Ah, well, I, I guess it's kind of ambiguous. So, um, well, well, let's go back over the terminology when we see the reaction. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess I notice a lot of students get confused by that terminology. Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't even use the words protonating and deprotonating then. The point is, the acid wants to give its proton to somebody. The acid wants to give its proton to somebody. It could give it to the water, but that doesn't turn out to be interesting here. Um, it needs to give it to somebody who's at least a little new, uh, at least a little basic. So it wants to give it to the carbon pi bond. That's right. We already learned that we could treat this like a nucleophile, um, but things that are nucleophiles generally are bases as well, because both nucleophiles and bases are things that donate electrons. That's the Lewis base definition of a base. Remember, the Lewis definition of a base is somebody who wants to donate electrons, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, a nucleophile is uh, also somebody uh, thought of as someone who wants to donate electrons. So the pi bomb wants to donate its electrons to the hydrogen. That's right. So we're going to have to rewrite the sulfuric acid a little bit differently. It helps to actually know what the structure of sulfuric acid is so we can show the mechanism here. So we should just memorize that this is the structure of sulfuric acid because otherwise it's difficult to, to show the mechanism accurately here. You're not attaching it to that, right? That's not attached. Pardon? That's not attached to the... Oh, no, that's a, the hydrogen is just accidentally close. So here's the uh, mechanism. OK. So carbon-carbon pi bonds tend to be nucleophilic or basic, depending on the conditions. That is, they're either going to uh, join, uh, pick up a proton, or pick up, uh, or, uh, pick up some other atom. All right, so now we have to show what the product of that step is going to look like. Well, again, it's ambiguous whether, this, uh, whether the hydrogen is going to end up on the left-hand carbon or the right. But in this case, it doesn't matter because they're equivalent. So I'll just put it on uh, this one over here. Uh, let, let's put it over here, say. Let's say the hydrogen is up here. Now, there's one important thing I left out of this picture. picture is the charges. Um, since the pi electrons moved into this bond, this carbon must have lost electrons, so it becomes positive. Remember that in any step of any mechanism, you always change two charges. The charge at the initial tail and the charge at the final head. Clearly the final head here is this oxygen. Since it started neutral and it's gaining electrons, it ends up negative. Um, but the initial tail, well, it turns out that the atom that was initially losing the electrons was this carbon. So since it started neutral, it has to become positive. All right, so that gives us uh, this setup over here. And we do still have the water floating around. All right, now, who would it be very reasonable now to put at the head of an arrow? The at the head, like this? No, the tail. Ah, so who would be reasonable to put at the head of an arrow? Oh, the head, the carbocation. Right. The plus. So now we have to ask who to put at the tail. Now I think your first guess was going to be to put the sulfuric acid at the tail. Um, however, we just have to have memorized, uh, actually this shouldn't be called sulfuric acid anymore, now it's sulfate. Because uh, it just turns out sulfate is not nucleophilic. Sulfate is not nucleophilic. The reason is that this negative charge is pretty happy where it is because it's stabilized by resonance.
there's another resonance form where this negative charge would be on this oxygen, and then there's a third resonance form where the negative charge would be on this oxygen. Since the negative charge is highly stabilized, it's not that eager to go out and attack anybody. So we should just memorize that sulfate is not nucleophilic. So is there anybody else around who could act like a nucleophile? What's the other nucleophilic atom in the mix? The oxygen. Yeah, this oxygen. This is a neutral oxygen. We have to draw in the lone pair of a donate. Now we've learned in the past that neutral oxygen is not a great nucleophile. It can't do SN2, but it certainly can attack a carbocation in SN1. We certainly have seen many examples of neutral oxygen attacking a carbocation in the second half of SN1. Well, at this point, this just looks like the second half of an SN1. We're just attacking a carbocation. So a neutral oxygen can definitely be nucleophilic enough to attack a carbocation. So what actually turns out here is that the oxygen is going to attack that carbocation. OK, uh, because we've memorized that this is not nucleophilic. All right, well, we've still got some work to do to get through this reaction here. Let's see if we can correctly draw the next intermediate. Let's see if we can correctly draw the next intermediate. problems uh, with the drawing that you came up with. First of all, you got the connectivity right, but a problem is, um, remember that every step of every reaction is going to change two charges. So we always have to look for two charges to change. Well, the initial tail here is on the oxygen. So what's the oxygen's charge going to be after this step? What should this oxygen's charge be? That's right. And that should really be very clear. The arrows are supposed to tell us exactly what the charges are. Notice that this oxygen started neutral but it's losing electrons. So that's all the thinking that's necessary to see that it has to end up positive. Once we get comfortable with them, the electron pushing arrows are supposed to make it quick and fast to see what the new charges are. Who was at the final head? Well, this carbon was at the final head. And since it started positive and it's gaining electrons, it ends up neutral. And remember that the charges are not an afterthought. They're the most important part of the whole picture. So we always want to make sure we change them. It's like swapping charges, basically. As a practical matter, what happened is that we swapped charges. That's right. But maybe that's not the safest way to think of it. The safest way is to think, what do the arrows tell me are happening to the charges? Because that's what is going to work for you on every single step of every single mechanism for the rest of the course. Anytime you do any electron pushing step, the atom at the initial tail will become one step more positive. So I understand okay. it, but I just want to make sure, like, the reason that is because the oxygen is donating its electron pair to the carbon atom. Yeah, the electrons that used to be in this pair are now in this bond. Sure. So the electron has less ownership of those electrons. So that since it started neutral, it's now positive. That's right. OK, yeah, so it's important to understand why that makes sense. And by the same token, this carbon here used to have a positive charge, but now it's, it started sharing these two electrons. Mm -hmm. So it's become neutral. OK, so it's good to think that through. But also, we can just do this mechanically. Whoever is at the initial tail always becomes one step more positive. And whoever is at the final head always becomes one step less positive or one step more negative. We have to do that on every step of every mechanism for the whole rest of the course. That gives us the most important part of the picture, which is the charges. OK, so that gives us our charges over here. And there's another issue. We have to be in the habit of always asking if we're forming a stereocenter. Uh, well, is this a stereocenter? Yeah, that means we need wedges and dashes. And we have to ask, how many products are we going to form? Two. Two products, because the water was attacking something trigonal planar. Since the water is attacking trigonal planar, it can attack from either of two directions. So we should actually draw one product that looks like this. And one product that looks like this. We'll get a racemic mixture of these two products. OK. And now we're still not done. Because nature doesn't like charges. If nature can find a way to get rid of these charges, it's going to do that. Uh, so let's see if I can find a way to get rid of those charges. 
This is something I think we saw already for SN2 and SN1. Do you remember what, what's something that we commonly do to get rid of a charge after the main reaction? Yeah, depropanate. We already saw a bunch of examples of that for uh, SN1 and SN2. Um, what, what's the symbol for a proton? This is the symbol for a proton. Uh, notice that protons have a positive charge. So if you want to get rid of a positive charge, you can get rid of your proton. So let's see if we can show the mechanism for this deprotonation. Well, we have to break out a hydrogen here. We need somebody to come in and take that proton. Well, now we can use the sulfate ion over here. We said that the sulfate ion cannot be used as a nucleophile. We just have that memorized. However, it is conventional to use it as a base for this step. It is conventional to use the sulfate ion as the base for this step over here. 